where the midbrain is what part? Below that. Below that. Okay. I didn't invent the word, right? Anyway. Let's start with our flow of CSF and thou shalt know thou shalt. So we're going to start making our CSF at the choroid plexus. Which you could say is the same thing as saying the epithalamus. That's fine. I'm okay with that. So the CSF fills the lateral and third ventricles. Okay, remind me again what ventricles were. Spaces. Those are the spaces, hollowness in my, these are spaces in my brain. What I'm doing is I'm making a water balloon. I'm filling the brain up from the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you those ventricles. Just a second here. Again. Up here. Are the lateral ventricles the first and second? Yeah, they just don't like them. right and left. And okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I were if I were pointing to your epithalamus, it'd be right about where my mouth is. <laughs> it's about where the epithalamus is. And it's making this fluid, and the fluid is leaking into these big horseshoes here. These are the laterals. And this middle one here, which is called the third. So I'm filling up the basic, the inside and center of my brain. The epithalamus would be right about here. So I'm filling up this balloon inside your brain. Then what's going to happen is I got to get that fluid out of there. What would happen if that fluid didn't leave the center of my brain? Pressure. Well, Build up, right? The balloon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the fluid down with these arrows. It's going to go down this little drain pipe right there. It's called the cerebral aqueduct. It's an important tube to know. Think of a Roman, right? Water to a brain, right? So it's going to drain down the cerebral aqueduct, which happens to be in the midbrain. So it's going to go down that tube, that drain pipe, whatever you want to call it, and that's going to hit a big empty space right here called your fourth ventricle. Then we're going to number four. The CSF enters the fourth ventricle. So I filled up my first two balloons. I go down my cerebral aqueduct. Now I'm filling up my fourth balloon. Take it down lower. Now you have a choice. If you look carefully here, the support, you'll notice that there is these little holes. It's drawing in here and here that let the fluid out of those tubes. So you, now you have a choice. Some of the fluid is going to continue down the very center of your spinal cord, which you learned last term was called the central canal. So once I leave the fourth ventricle, some of the fluid is going to go down the spinal canal. So it's just going to keep on going down the spine. Some of the fluid, though, is going to come out of that fourth ventricle and go on the outside of the brain. If you look here, these, this fluid now is on the outside of the brain, not the inside. call that spot that has the fluid on the outside of the brain? You learned it last term. The arachnoid space? Well, the subarachnoid sub space. So some of the fluid's going to go down the spinal cord, and some is going to go basically popping out to the subarachnoid space. 
on the outside of your brain, in the meninges, which we'll talk about a little later as well. And that's basically the flow of the CSF. If I make it in the center of my brain, I pull the balloons, goes down to the floor, and that goes down my spine and out to subarachnoid space. And if I do all that properly, then I have this picture here that shows the fluid circulating. So I'm going to show you an animation of that process because I know you love those so. Give me just a second. Cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, circulates freely through the ventricles of the brain, the central canal of the spinal cord, and the subarachnoid space. It is produced in each of the four ventricles by the choroid plexus, a structure that consists of specialized ependymal cells, their associated blood vessels, and connective tissues. So the area would be called the epithalamus, but the thing is the choroid plexus. Do you believe it or not, you do have choroid plexus every, in every ventricle, but the largest one is the epithalamic one. So that's the main one we talk about. The endothelial cells of blood vessels within the choroid plexus and ependable cells are joined by tight junctions and collectively form the blood CSF barrier, a portion of the blood brain barrier. The selective permeability of this barrier controls what molecules are able to reach the cells of the brain. We can trace the flow of CSF starting in the lateral ventricles. From the lateral ventricles, CSF flows through the interventricular foramina to the third ventricle. From here, the CSF enters the cerebral aqueduct and travels to the fourth ventricle. Once in the fourth ventricle, the fluid enters the subarachnoid space around the brain and spinal cord by either passing through the two lateral apertures in the walls of the fourth ventricle or through the single median aperture located in the roof of the fourth ventricle. A portion of the CSF also enters the central canal of the spinal cord. That's the choice. So as you get older, less and less goes down the spine. So basically, you're going to go there, something go to the outside, something down the middle. Why is that? Why? Believe it or not, the central canal closes as you get older. The spinal cord is a bit more wear and tear. The neurons actually close that canal off, so they can't get fluid down the center. So we're lying on the separate Accumulations of arachnoid villi, called arachnoid granulations, project into a venous channel within the dura mater known as the superior sagittal sinus. CSF is recycled into the venous part of the bloodstream at the arachnoid granulations. The turnover rate for CSF, from its production at the choroid plexus to its reabsorption into the superior sagittal sinus, is approximately 0.4 milliliters per minute. It's not like a lot, but if you do the math, you circulate this about three times a day. You so it's continually up. getting made. So it's continually getting made in the middle and traveling down. So basically, it goes from your brain down to your butt back. Now, well, we got another part here, because they mentioned that, is how do you get it out of those areas anyway? Let's go back in the video. Let's look at those things that kept changing words on. So let's look at this picture here. So you notice now my subarachnoid space is here. There's this funny little hole in my subarachnoid space pointing up into my skull, basically. And that is it. That's where you drain the CSF. So when we get done with number five, we have to drain CSF into that area at the top of my head. So I'm going to use a word that I would use, which is superior sagittal. Drains above your your brain into your skull, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my static picture, this one here. I'm going to show you that step number six. So we made it in the middle, we drain down and around. And if you zoom in right up here, here's one of those little holes in my head. That's a hole in the subarachnoid layer that lets the fluid leak up 
into that spot above my brain and below my skull called the superior sagittal sinus. So if you think about the whole pathway, you start in the center of your brain, you go down basically around all your spine and brain, you pop out of a couple millimeters differently, so on the outside. So you go down, around, back on the top. Is that the pleuropathic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got a hole basically through all of it. The subarachnoid spine. So we call that the superior sagittal sinus for the arachnoid villi, arachnoid granulation. <clears throat> Make sense? And those are only in the head? Yes. This is where it leaks back out? Yes. Okay. So when they have to put a drip, like a drain in uh -huh. the brain swelling, do they go all the way down into the subarachnoid space, or do they just... Well, if there's extra fluid, like there's extra CSF or that, yeah, they'll punch it into the subarachnoid space. Okay. And normally, it's the easiest place when the drain is down your throat. Okay. So they'll just drain it internally and just drip your CSF down your throat. Is the superior sagittal sinus the same as the villi? The villi is a hole that leak into the sinus. The villi is the hole. The sinus right. is the So formally, the villus is the hole. The sinus is the spot you put the hole. So they're essentially, it's like the, uh, it's like epithalamus and cord plexus. You can essentially use the synonym. Yeah. There is a distinction. Yes? So the CSF that goes down the spinal cord, where does that get drained out? It, it ends up eventually, good question, it ends up leaking out of an aperture down in the cauda equina, and then going into the subarachnoid space as well. So eventually everything ends up in the subarachnoid space and ends up going down to the top of your brain. So you go down to your butt, basically, and back up to your brain. It's a long run. That's your CSF. So let's talk about a medical application. Let's say you're a newborn baby <coughs> whose cerebral aqueduct has been smashed. What happens to you if you have a smashed cerebral aqueduct? The brain dries out, brain yeah, swells. So well, hydrocephalus, right? I can do one, two, and three. I can't drain in number four. So what happens is the fluid keeps building up the balloon. Your brain keeps getting smashed further and further out. The doctor has to tell me either do number three or put a drain in so you can drain the fluid out some way. Right? So hydrocephalus is a problem in this flow chart. You're preventing the fluid from flowing in the natural so those of you is, working, it, is it a permanent like drain, like a chunk or something? It can be. Uh, depending on the situation, it could just be a temporary thing, or it could be a forever thing. Okay. Let's pretend you're going to go to a doctor, and he's going to do a lumbar puncture. He's going to test your CSF. Where do they drain you with a lumbar puncture? Mm -hmm. Explain how that works. How can they drain your lumbar if the CSF's in your brain? That's right, because they know this anatomy that eventually it's going to drain to your subarachnoid space everywhere. And so even though it's made in your brain, it is going to travel down your spine, either inside or outside, and I can just drain it off down here, because the same stuff is up here. Yeah, I'll feel there. So doctors use this idea that as long as I know you've got a circulation, I can drain the bottom and still get new fluid out the top. But that will still work. So doctors use the CSF flow to understand the brain circulatory system. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's CSF. So name your epithalamus. So we got your thalamus, get your hypothalamus, get your epithalamus. Those are all the diencephalon. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna keep working through our brains. We're about halfway done. Right. We find you some more brain features here. <laughs> What we've done so far, we have gone 